Hello everyone, my name is Mang Singh and today we are going to discuss the history questions which were asked in the recently conducted Anubhav uh, yesterday only. Uh, and through the history questions, we are going to discuss some of the dimensions and also try to discover that what kind of the questions you can expect from the history. Uh, recently, it has been seen ki in the ancient history, art and culture portion, the questions, uh, the number of the questions which were asked were quite high. And uh, but mujhe hamesha lagta hai ki uh, bahut sare log is wali uh, thought process se completely kuch subjects ko avoid karne lagte hain. Jaise bahut time pehle ya kuch time pehle uh, aap log general science ko ya science ko utne achche se nahi padte the. But now what I can say ki with respect to the prelims examination or with respect to the mains examination or with respect to complete preparation of UPSC, every subject is very important. So, make sure that you are not thinking or having any preconceived notion ki aap kunch subjects ko ya kunch portions ko avoid kar sakte hain. Uh, haan, jo recent trend mein hai ya jis tarikhe ke questions poochhe jaante hain, unse bahut kuch idea zaroor lagaya ja sakta hai. For example, agar if you go through the polity questions, right? So, once you see the polity questions or PYQs, you are going to see that there are going to be questions based on some keywords. For example, liberty, for example, secular, for example, rule of law, for example, state. So, these type of keyword based questions have been started, as, have been uh, asked by UPSC into the recent time. So, make sure that you are aware about these type of keywords. So, definitely these uh, this uh, the current theme or if you go through the PYQs that gives you what kind of the questions or whenever you are preparing that particular topic or subject, what are the key areas or what are the pointers you should keep in mind. But agar aap ye soche ki aap kuch portions ko avoid kar sakte hain ya aapko kuch portions pahnne nahi chahiye. So, that will not be a good advice. So, I feel ki every subject has its, has its space and every subject is very much important. Talking about the history, uh, in history you can expect uh, questions which are going to have some kind of the timeline chronology. So, they can these questions can be categorized in terms of the factual based questions. Kuch questions aise hote hain jahan pe jab thoda sa in depth jain. For example, if there is a question on non-cooperation movement. So, non-cooperation movement pe ek statement factual ho sakta hai ki from where it started Congress ne kaun sa resolution pass kiya ya Congress ka kaun si wali meeting ke baad mein this uh, particular movement started. Then the second statement can be based on the nature of that particular movement ki us movement mein uh, with respect to the societal participation, kaun sa wala section of society ka participation kaisa tha. So, the second statement can be based on the nature of that movement. So, it is also not right to say ki in history you can always expect completely factual question. Definitely you should have some amount of understanding also so that these type of in-depth question you can solve, right. So, we are going to discover the questions or we are going to talk or discuss the questions one by one. There will be some questions which are going to be very factual. In those questions, there is nothing much to explain and whenever I am going to discuss, at least I, I understand that you, you have given this test after some amount of preparation and you are aware about some basic keywords. Right? So, let us start our discussion without further time and we are going to discuss the portions of the history. Right? So, the first question which I am going to discuss is the question number 16 and it is going to talk on Ilbert Bill. Right? So, what I always suggest ki whenever you read the question, do mark the keyword of those question or the keywords which are present in, in the statements because those keywords are going to save your time. Kai bar aap statements bar bar padhte rehte hain aur aapko yehi idea nahi lag pata hai ki wo statement ya wo question kis theme pe poochha gaya hai. Aur kai bar aisa bhi ho sakta hai ki agar aapne keywords ko mark kar liya. So, you are not only marking the keyword but also saving your time because uh, you are aware ki now this this keyword is going to be the core argument which can make your question right or wrong or a statement right or wrong. Similarly, whenever you are going to see correct or incorrect option, how many of the above statement or these type of statements whenever uh, it is written, do mark that UPSC is asking the correct option or incorrect option because most of the aspirants whenever they do not circle or mark, so they are sometimes they make the silly mistake. कि हो सकता है कि not correct पूछा गया और आपने अपना option correct के हिसाब से mark कर दिया हो. तो ये छोटी-छोटी चीजें हैं जो थोड़ा सा जरूर difference create करती हैं कि अगर आपको जो statement के core arguments के keyword हैं अगर आप उनको mark कर लें तो चीजें solve करने में भी आसान हो जाती हैं और आपकी चीजें गलत होने के chances बहुत कम हो रहते हैं. So, the first statement is going to be based on Indian National Congress, right? So, Indian National Congress adopted a resolution in the support of Ilbert Bill. So, now, now, 
इफ आई से कि लेट सपोज आपको एल्बर्ट विल के बारे में सब कुछ नहीं भी पता है राइट बट एटलीस्ट यू आर अवेयर अबाउट द बेसिक टाइम लाइन वेन इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस इज गोइंग टू बी फॉर्म एंड वेन एल्बर्ट विल वॉज प्रेजेंटेड राइट सो इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस इज वॉज फॉर्म इन एटीन एटी फाइव एंड एल्बर्ट विल केम इन टू एग्जिस्टेंस इन एटीन एटी थ्री एट द टाइम ऑफ द लॉर्ड रिपन राइट सो वेन इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस इज गोइंग टू बी फॉर्म आफ्टर द बिल सो डेफिनेटली इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस तो कोई अडॉप्ट कर नहीं सकती उस चीज के लिए रेजोल्यूशन इज इंट इट सो द टाइम लाइन कैन गिव यू द इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस वॉज फॉर्म इन एटीन एटी फाइव एंड एल्बर्ट विल केम इन टू एटीन एटी थ्री दैट मेक्स द स्टेटमेंट वन इज गोइंग टू बी इन करेक्ट बिकॉज इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस कैन नॉट प्रेजेंट एनी रेजोल्यूशन इन सपोर्ट और अगेंस्ट द एल्बर्ट बिल राइट सो स्टेटमेंट वन इज गोइंग टू बी इन करेक्ट सेकेंड टॉकिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ द एल्बर्ट बिल वाई इट वॉज प्रेजेंटेड बिकॉज बिफोर द एल्बर्ट बिल वॉट वॉज द बैकग्राउंड और द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द एल्बर्ट बिल कि लेट सपोज देर आर टू पर्सन वन इज इंडियन सेकेंड इज यूरोपियन दीज टू पर्सन कमिटेड द सेम नेचर ऑफ द क्राइम सो नेचर ऑफ द क्राइम इज सेम बट यूरोपियन पर्सन हैव द प्रिविलेज दैट वेन एवर दिस यूरोपियन पर्सन इज गोइंग टू बी प्रेजेंटेड इन द कोर्ट ऑफ द लॉ ही इज ऑलवेज गोइंग टू बी ट्राइड बाय और द ट्रायल इज गोइंग टू बी इन द ऑब्जर्वेशन बाय द जज हु इज गोइंग टू बी अ यूरोपियन ही कैन नॉट बी ट्रायल्ड बाय द जज हु इज गोइंग टू बी और एनी इंडियन जज सो इंडियन जजेस कैन नॉट मेक द जजमेंट अगेंस्ट एनी पर्टिकुलर यूरोपियन so this is the clear case of the discrimination so to make sure that this this discrimination should be abolished it was known as a progressive bill that is why lately it became the controversial bill and uh, in the, it was presented in 1883 which empowered indian magistrate or the session judges to try charges against european or british subject so what it was there that it empowered indian magistrate or session judges so that they can also try the european or the british subject so once the first statement is incorrect second statement is correct right so once this statement based questions even if you are going to figure out one statement is incorrect or second statement is correct or not agar pehle wale statement mein pata hi chal gaya ki incorrect hai to there are high chances that you are going to mark the right option so the answer is going to be d as the statement was in one is incorrect and statement two is correct right so that was the question number 16 next second recently gwalior was declared as city of music so it was recently de declared as creative city of music shandar shahar shandar log yahan ki kachori aur yahan ki nazakat creative city of music right somebody was saying kachoris are very famous so gwalior was declared as creative city of music by unesco which of the following musicians of medieval india belong to the gwalior region so now you can see this is a very blend type of question because some city was is in news not aise hi there is going to be a very specific or important region because it was declared as creative city of music and that too by UNESCO so sometimes if something is going to have an association with a very important organizations such as UN right or let's suppose hamare yahan G20 abhi hua to agar G20 mein indian culture mein kisi particular aspect pe baat ho rahi hai ya ho sakta hai india ke kisi cultural aspect ki koi uh, writing koi uh, painting is tarike ki G20 mein present ki gayi gayi ya fir usko portray kiya gaya so that that uh, thing is going to be become important so similarly if something is in news some city is in news and has an association with respect to an organization to the un so ho sakta hai ki wahan se koi question pucha ja sake because that particular city was in news because of a particular reason and reason is sit, creative city of music so now the question has been framed ki during the medieval time कौन से ऐसे शानदार लोग थे या कोई ऐसा शानदार क्या था उस शहर का हु इज गोइंग टू हैव एन एसोसिएशन इन द म्यूजिक एंड गोइंग टू बी नोन एज नोन वर्ल्ड वाइड राइट सो इन द मेडिवल टाइम वन नेम यू हैव डेफिनेटली डेफिनेटली हर्ड दैट तानसेन इज गोइंग टू बी देयर है ना हो सकता है आपको ये नहीं पता चल रहा है अभी कि तानसेन इज गोइंग टू बी देयर एज अ म्यूजिशियन और तानसेन इज गोइंग टू बी फ्रॉम ग्वालियर और नॉट बट एटलीस्ट यू यू आर अवेयर अबाउट तानसेन है ना एंड इन द नेम ऑफ द Uh, or in the world of the music in the medieval time he was a very well known and he is going to be one of the member of the nine jewels of the akbar so mulla daud is from up amir khusro is from up 
ऐसा थोड़ी ना है सब कुछ एमपी में ही यूपी में भी तो बहुत कुछ है सुमनला दौड़ इज फ्रॉम यूपी एंड अमीर खुसरो इज फ्रॉम यूपी पुरंदर दास इज फ्रॉम कर्नाटका राइट ही हैज रिटर्न वेरी ब्यूटिफुल पोएम्स एंड हिज वर्क इज इन अवधि मुल्ला दौड़ राइट एंड अमीर खुसरो इज ऑल्सो अ वेल नोन टेम सो द आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी तानसेन दैट ही इज गोइंग टू बिलोंग फ्रॉम द ग्वालियर राइट सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी अ फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन है ना गेस करने के लिए अगर आपको किसी बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट म्यूजिशियन जिसके पर आप पहला गेस कर सकते हैं तो इसमें तानसेन ही आप ऑप्शन मेजरली टिक करेंगे अग्री नेक्स्ट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग एस्पेक्ट ऑफ स्वामी दयानंद सरस्वती आइडियोलॉजी प्लेसेज हिम आउटसाइड द मेन स्ट्रीम ऑफ नाइनटीन सेंचुरी हिंदू रिफॉर्म मूवमेंट सो दिस क्वेश्चन हैज बीन प्लेस्ड कि यस स्वामी दयानंद सरस्वती इज गोइंग टू बी अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिफॉर्मर एट द टाइम ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी वेन द सोशो रिलीजियस रिफॉर्म मूवमेंट्स वर गोइंग ऑन सो मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री में जब आप सोशो रिलीजियस रिफॉर्म मूवमेंट पढ़ते हैं सो यू आर गोइंग टू रीड दैट वी कैन सेग्रीगेट द सोशो रिलीजियस रिफॉर्म मूवमेंट्स और रिफॉर्मर्स इन टू टू कैटेगरीज फर्स्ट इज गोइंग टू बी नोन एज द रिफॉर्मिस्ट एंड सेकेंड इज गोइंग टू बी नोन एज रिवाइवलिस्ट वॉट इज द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन द रिफॉर्मिस्ट एंड द रिवाइवलिस्ट रिफॉर्मिस्ट आर गोइंग टू से यू शुड क्वेश्चन योर पास्ट बिकॉज बिकॉज देर कैन बी सो मेनी थिंग्स विच वर रिटर्न एज अ प्रोग्रेसिव थॉट देर वर सो मेनी टीचिंग्स देर वर सो मेनी लर्निंग्स विच वर रिटर्न एज अ प्रोग्रेसिव थॉट टू मेक द सोसाइटी बेटर इन आवर रिलीजियस टेक्स्ट over a period of time taking a reference from those things people started modifying those things and utilizing or creating new customs and traditions which are causing social evils so you we have to reform this society so that we can clear out this social evil so we have to put a filter we have to put a filter so that all the social evils can be filtered out and finally we can focus more on the we can focus more on the old uh, progressive saying which were written in our text right so there is going to be a scope of questioning the past there is going to be an a scope of uh, questioning the uh, the things which were written into the religious text or mythological text or those kind of text which are going to build the foundation of our faith value system but revivalist are going to say that whatever has been written whatever has been written in our text is going to be completely true for example once once raja ram mohan roy said that a sati or the practice of sati is going to be termed as the social evil and it it is not going to find any mention in our mythological religious text or the books so raja ram mohan roy is going to say what he is going to say ki i am also going to read so he read all the books and he didn't find any mention of the sati so that means sati is going to be the evil which has to be filtered out isn't it so they are also saying but they are saying ki at least you can get back uh, uh, read them and also question them isn't it but these people are going to say revivalist people that there is no scope of questioning and those texts whatever has been written into the vedas especially whatever has been written into the vedas is completely true and you should not question and adapt the progressive value system from the uh, from the learnings of the vedas so that you can purify yourself or so that you can learn yourself so that you can make yourself more progressive right so swami dayanand saraswati saraswati's ideology is going to be one of the revivalist kind of the ideology that is why he is considered as one of the social religious reformer which places him outside the scope of other religious reformer so on this theme the question is based right so if you understand this theme you can easily take that belief in the vedic infallibility is going to place him outside the mainstream of the 19th century social hindu uh, uh, reform movements right so if you know this basic difference then also you can do so it is going to be an interlinkage of some basic differences or the concept rather than asking you a very very direct amount of question right factual question ke sath mein ye hai ki if you know you know right there is nothing like ki usme kuch change la sakte for example if there is a question on treaties arrange the following treaties into the chronological order or arrange the following battles into the chronological order right so if there is going to be a treaty for example uh, treaty of paris treaty of madras uh, treaty of aix la chapelle right so these type of treaties or treaty of manglo let's suppose these treaties are have been given and you have to arrange right so if you have to arrange if you don't know that these treaties have a reference with which wars if you know this or if you 
uh, if you don't know the timeline, then you cannot arrange, isn't it? So factual questions में क्या है कि if you know, you know. अगर उसमें नहीं आता है तो फिर कुछ कर नहीं सकते, isn't it? So this question consider the following statements about Veer Bhadra Temple. So this statement is going to talk on temple. Okay, recently our prime minister visited this temple, right? Or if you if kya, aap log to dekhte hai. So whenever you are watching so many YouTube shorts, so you will find a short or aapne agar kabhi dekha hoga ki there is going to be a hanging pillar in a temple where people are putting the handkerchief or a very uh, uh, or any particular cloth and they are going to put it from the one side and they are going to pull it out of from the other side. So that hanging pillar is also going to be present. It, this temple is present in Lepakshi village in Andhra Pradesh from where the Lepakshi saris are also very famous, right? So, Veerabhadra temple we are going to discuss. It was built under the patronage of Eastern Chalukyas. So, the first factual information is going to be asked about this temple. Under whose time period, under whose the patronage this, temp this uh, temple was built. So, kis king ke patronage pe ya us samay pe waha pe kiska rule tha, kiska raj tha, us time period pe ye, ye temple kisne banwaya. उस पर्टिकुलर टाइम पीरियड पे किसका राज्य था इस उस राज्य में या उस पर्टिकुलर टाइम पीरियड में अंडर हुज पैटर्नेज दिस टेंपल वाज बिल्ड राइट सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट फैक्चुअल इंफॉर्मेशन इट वाज एक्चुअली बिल्ड अंडर द सर्विस ऑफ विजयनगर किंग्स एंड वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट पर्सन हु प्लेड एन इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन बिल्डिंग दिस टेंपल वाज वीर अन्ना राइट so it was built by veer anna in the service of the vijayanagar king so first statement becomes the incorrect because it was not built under the patronage of the eastern chalukyas right next the second thing is going to talk which deity is going to preside so second the statement the presiding deity in the temple is an incarnation of vishnu as you know ki there is going to be the incarnation of shiva so the presiding temple deity in that particular temple is Shiva, not the Vishnu. So that's why I always say ki marking of keyword can save your time because you know ki presiding de de deity ko mark liya, temple mein dekh liya ki kya hai, statement simple likha hua hai aur last mein it is going to talk about the presiding deity. So presiding deity hai koon si, Vishnu ki hai ya Shiva, Shiva ki hai. So yaan Vishnu likha hua hai, you know ki that it is going to be the Shiva. So definitely the first and the second statement, both the statements are incorrect. And once you enter into this temple, you are going to see a lot of mural paintings that are on the ceiling and that are depicting so many mythological stories, right? So our cultural, uh, our heritage, raha hai, jo bhi itni, itni lambi mythological history, hai, so those history ko depict karne ke liye, those paintings are going to be on the ceilings. So this famous for the Murar paintings depicting illustrations from the Ramayana and Mahabharat, that is the only statement which is correct. So option is going to be a. Ab is tarike ke questions may be, this is going to be a very layered question because first statement is going to talk that once when this uh, temple was built under whose patronage, second is going to be there talking about the other characteristics about the main deity and third is going to talking about the illustrations from the which of the following. Uh, which of the following uh, paintings or which of the which of the following background of the our heritage, right? So this is going to be a very very layered question. Agreed? Next. Consider the following statements about a whole inscription. This is present in Karnataka. So similar, this is also going to be a layered question because it is going to talk about actually this inscription is going to talk on which particular personality and what is in what this inscription is going to talk about or ye inscription kab likha gaya tha, right? Or kiske dwara likha gaya tha? Because this is going to be a question on inscription. So ye information de raha hoga, kis particular time period ki information de raha hai, kiske time period ke liye likha gaya, kiske time period ko define karne ke liye likha gaya, kya major information de raha hai aur kiske dwara likha gaya, isn't it? So these type of information are going to be there, agree? So it is an, uh, it is written for Chalukyan kill, king, Kirti Varman 2, actually it is written for Pulkeshan 2, right? So the first statement is incorrect because it was not written for the Kirti Varman 2, it was written for Pulkeshan 2. So that is why the first statement is incorrect. Second, it was composed by Ravi Kirti, the court poet. So this, per, uh, this person was the court poet at that time and this statement is correct. And it, this inscription is going to give the information once the Chalukyan victory over the ruler of the Harshwardhan or uh, over the ruler of the Kannauj that is 
Harshvardhan. So what it is going to mention? It is going to mention about the victory of a king of whom Chalukyan king and who over whom Kannauj ke jo ruler hai usamay ke Harshvardhan. So this is the correct answer. So answer is going to be the second and the third are correct. That means the option B is going to be the correct one. Thoda sa tough sawal. Next, Mahatma Gandhi was awarded Kesare Hind Medal. That is the first statement. And second, uh, Mahatma Gandhi served in a natal Indian medical corps during Boer Wars. So, uh, Mahatma Gandhi was awarded as Kesare Hind Medal uh, as uh, he was working as a volunteer in, uh, uh, during the Boer Wars. So, Boer Wars were, were, uh, were fought uh, in the 18 0, 1899 to 1902 when Britishers wanted to capture the southern part of the Africa. At that particular time, the Mahatma Ma Gandhi was acting as a volunteer as uh, and working into the na Natal Indian Medical Corps where he was working to make sure that the people who are getting wounded should be carried on the stretcher and uh, put to the ambulance, right. So, he acted as a volunteer and to reward his service at that particular time, in 1915, he was awarded as Kesare Hin Medal. Right by the recommendation of the Secretary of the State, but in as as after four years, when the Khilafat movement is going to start, so he is going to return this medal also. So if you have read the Khilafat movement, you are going to read that the Milab Mahatma Gandhi is going to return the Kesare Hind medal. Right. So he has been awarded this particular medal, and the second statement is also correct because he was awarded his active volunteership during the uh, his working a, in the natal Indian medical corps. That means that this statement is also correct, right. Next, again this is a very factual information. Uh, the question says, Amukta Malyada, an epic poem about Ranganayaka and his devotee was written by. So, it was written by Krishna Devaraya, right. इसमें कुछ ऐसा एक्सप्लेन करने के लिए बहुत कुछ है नहीं क्योंकि किसी रिटर्न वर्क के बारे में किसी ऑथर के बारे में कोई लिटरेरी वर्क के बारे में अगर सवाल पूछा गया है सो द स्टेटमेंट इज गोइंग टू बी द यस और नो आता है तो आता है नाउ विद रेफरेंस टू द मेडिवल इंडिया सलहार गिंजी एंड पनहाला वर नोन एज सो एट लीस्ट आई कैन सेंस दैट एट लीस्ट यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अबाउट सलहार फोर्ट है ना uh, Maharashtra, mein, this is a very famous fort and Panhala is also a fort into the Maharashtra. This is situated into the Sayadri Hills in Nasik and this is this fort is situated into the Kolhapur, right. I have been to Kolhapur, visited this fort, right. Ab to utna zyada, uh, matlab, lavish aur pehle ki hai nahi, kuch ruins bache huye. But Salhar and Panhala, these two are going to be named or Salhar name hai kaisa hai, jo at least logo ne suna hota hai. So, in medieval history, you can al always expect some questions which are related to some kind of the keyword. These keyword can be depicting some administrative structure or better to put organization or any rank. Similarly, some military rank or structure or similarly some economic structure right isn't it so in medieval history you can expect some uh, some of the questions which are always going to be based on the keywords ha na jaise aapko ikta ke bare mein pucha ja sakta hai kisi particular administrator ka naam us time period pe kya hua karta tha uske bare mein pucha ja sakta hai isi tarike se economic policy mein koi aisa term jo us time ki economic policy ko bata raha ho wo bhi pucha ja sakta hai so in medieval history you are going to uh, uh, you are going to be asked these type of questions so these three words are going to be related to forts as i said ki one fort is going to be situated into the Nasik and the second is situated into the Kolhapur, right. Next, with reference to medieval India, battle of Khanwa was fought. So, as I said, ki here they have asked you a very, very simple direct question, but sometimes you can always be asked these type of battles into the chronological order. So, uh, apart from reading that any particular important battles, right, just a battle of Panipat, hai, pata hi hona chahiye because these battles which created a landmark in the in changing the course of actions of history are going to be always important, isn't it? So, just for example, battle of Buxar and battle of Plassey are going to play a very important role because they are going to change the nature of the company from traders and now they are going to become or play an important role into the political and economic 
structure of our country. So, actually they gained the political power and economic power also. That is why the battle of Plassey or battle of Buxar are going to be very much important rather than only the years, what are going to be the causes or significance, is not it? So, those battles who change the course of action of the history are always going to be important. So, rather uh, apart from reading that between whom these battles were fought, you should always remember the year also. So, first is going to be here Prithira Chauhan and Muhammad Gauri. So, this is the battle of the Tarain, the famous battle, the first time, uh, the first battle which was, which is going to be fought between the Prithira Chauhan and Muhammad Gauri. Actually, in 1191 and in 1192, two consecutive battles are going to be fought, where he is going to uh, fight. Pehle wale battle mein wo ladenge aur usko hara denge, right? Aur dusre wale battle mein there is going to be the ruler from the Delhi also from the Toma dynasty which is going to fight again uh, with the Prithvira Chauhan against Muhammad Ghori. 1191 and 92, right? So, this was fought between the uh, as a battle of the Tarayan. So, it, this is not the battle of the Khanwa, Prithvira Chauhan and Muhammad Ghori. Second, Jaichand and Mahmud of Ghazni, actually Jaichand is going to fight after uh, Prithvira Chauhan is going to be defeated. So, in the battle of Chandavar, Muhammad Ghori is going to fight the uh, fight along with Jaichand. Right. So, he is at that particular time, he is uh, ruling the area from uh, Varanasi to Kannauj. Uh, the Gurjara Pratyahara empire broke down into so many the Rajputana rulers and Jaichand is going to be one of them. So, he is going to fight the battle of the Chandavar. So, second statement is also incorrect that because the Chandavar has been fought between the uh, uh, that is going to be known as the battle of the Chandavar that is going to be fought between the Jachand and Muhammad Ghori. So, first state, first option is incorrect, second is incorrect. Rana Sangha and Babar that is the battle which was known as the battle of the Khanwa, right. So, if you if you know about because this is a very direct information, a direct type of question. If you know the battle of Khanwa, it is going to be fought between the Rana Sangha and Babar. Shesha Suri and Humayu are going to fight in the battle of the Chausa is not it. So, this is the battle of Chosa. So, that is the option C is going to be the correct one. Next, again a modern history question. So, we have discussed quite a blend ancient art and culture, medieval and modern. With reference to cabinet mission plan, which of the following statement is not correct? That is what I always say. If you are not, let us suppose here if it is not bold italic right in the paper, then you can miss out. So, you will not know if correct ho or not correct. Ho hai. So, with respect to the cabinet mission plan, which of the following statement is are not correct? Is not correct because one statement is there, because option is not there. So, first it provided for the constituent assembly partially elected by the members, uh, provincial assemblies and partially nominated by the princely state. You all know, we have read, we have learned that how constitution is going to be made, right. So, there are going to be members which are going to be elected from the provincial assemblies and the rest of the members are going to be nominated by the princely state. That is why the constituent assembly is going to be a body comprising of the members which are going to be elected as well as nominated. This is going to be the correct. It proposed an executive council with equal representation to Hindus and Muslim. This was actually proposed into the vowel plan. This was actually proposed into the vowel plan. So, this statement becomes the incorrect one. So, option B is going to be the incorrect because uh, it was not proposed under the cabinet mission plan, it is proposed under the vowel plan, where there is going to be an equal representation uh, in the executive council with the Hindus and Muslim. So, what we have tried to discover through this question that what are the key areas or what kind of the questions you can expect might be some things which have a current based reference. For example, city of the Gwalior, right? For example, prime minister visited some temple. For example, some temple is in news because uh, uh, because of any particular reason. So, might be at that particular time if or in this particular time if that temple is in news. So, uski kya major characteristics humko yaad rakhni chahiye ki kiske time period pe bana hai, wo kis deity ko represent kar raha hai, uska basic architecture kaisa hai, wo kaun se style of architecture pe based hai. Similarly, once we are going into the modern history, we should definitely know about the some basic timeline or chronological order or the question can be based on a particular personality. For example, we have discussed the Gandhi ji. In the medieval history time period, you should always remember some of the keywords which have an association with the administrative organization, administrative structure, administrate, administrators or especially into the economic policies or with relation to the military officers or military structure, right. For example, Iskandaras we have discussed. So, in ancient medieval 
and modern the the timeline uh, in these uh, subjects the question can be framed into the different segments so ancient medieval modern are equally uh, going to be important and especially the uh, cultural part of ancient history and medieval history is going to be very very important because recently it has been seen that the question weighted from these areas have increased so my, make sure that you not do not leave any portion jaise bahut sare logon ko man mein aata hai ki ancient medieval aur sath mein ya culture wala portion mujhe bahut zyada tough lag raha hai in terms of learning things to main isko chhod deta hu so what i can say ki don't leave any any thing with respect to or any subject not only in history also i am just giving the reference in uh, in the segregation of the history but for all all the other subjects also because you don't know on that particular day out of 100 questions how many questions you can easily solve see on that particular day you are going to receive 100 questions but out of 100 the domain specific question where you can play put your permutation combination put your knowledge put your temperament to solve these 80 questions based on your knowledge, based on your awareness, based on your understanding. Because the rest of the 20 questions are only going to be like a chase down question or out of the blue questions. So, you do not have any control on 20 questions and through this test series, through these tests, you only learn the capability how to how to handle the questions right. So, the learning of these tests is going to how to handling of these questions so that you know which questions you have to leave and while attempting the questions what kind of mistakes you are making for example you might be aware about the topic you have learned that topic but ho sakta hai aisa ki aap omr mein bar bar galtiyan kar rahe ho bharne mein to 80 questions ko solve karna aur 80 questions ko omr mein waise hi bhar lena is also a basic thing bahut sare bachcho ki ye maine dekhi hai recent mein observation dusri cheez ye hai ki aapko ye pata chalta hai in tests ke dwara ya in tests ko solve karne ke which of the questions you should definitely not touch or leave the questions hai na to andar ki jo greed hoti hai na ki bas man aisa keh raha hai to pure kar deta hu aur sabke liye apni apni ek strategy ho sakti hai but wo strategy ko evolve karne ke liye these tests are very helpful in giving you firstly a good evaluation in terms of self evaluation whatever you have read till now which are your weak areas which are your strong areas and what kind of common mistakes you are continuously making and secondly apart from this uh, this uh, this uh, revision or evaluation you are also going to know what what is going to be the current theme what kind of the question what what should be your approach while attempting any particular subject or while preparing any particular topic right so you, this is also going to give you a taste ki, okay this subject should be read into this particular sphere also or my preparation can be aligned because now you have a variety of question and the third most important thing that it is going to set a background for building your temperament so that over a period of time so jaise jo log bolte hain 30 test 40 test 50 test so after solving these 30 40 50 test you are learning or earning some kind of a temperament in your mind so that uh, going on the 26th of may you are very 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 aware about yourself aur wahan ja kar ke wo common mistakes aap na kare jo aap in wale test mein karte aaye right so that's all for the history discussion from my side my very sincere wishes keep smiling keep learning keep growing and we are going to conduct the next anubhav on the 14th of april and we are conduct we are going to uh, keep keep you updating so if you have not registered till now make sure you register for the anubhav that is going to happen on the 14th of april right for any help for any other further query you can reach out to us thank you and have a great day